Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Singer, Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine and Medical Education. And I'm Dr. Omar Amir, Assistant Professor, Department of Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine. And welcome to the 2022 Gold Humanism Honor Society induction ceremony. The Gold Humanism Honor Society recognizes students, residents, and faculty who are exemplars of compassionate patient care and who serve as role models, mentors, and leaders in medicine. Members are peer nominated and are the ones that others say they want taking care of their own family. Since its inception in 2002, Gold Humanism Honor Society has grown in influence to become a vital part of medical school and residency training program cultures throughout the U.S. This year, more than ever, it has been important to recognize that being a medical provider demands engagement with issues in the wider world, that medicine does not exist in a vacuum, that our patients are whole humans deserving of caring, inquisitive providers who listen and advocate. Despite the current obstacles, it is energizing to see our students exude positivity and hope and uphold the values of equity, service, community, and humanism. We watch every year with awe and admiration as medical students nominate their own to receive the great honor of being inducted into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. We are so pleased to be able to honor and recognize this year's GHHS inductees. Please join us in celebrating their remarkable achievements. What does it mean to be humanistic in medicine? It's a great question. Does it mean that we should be humane by always demonstrating compassion and empathy? That we should value and incorporate the humanities into our clinical care and medical research? The answer is neither. I know because I looked it up. To be humanistic is to recognize the common humanity of all people and to stress the value, goodness, and common needs of all human beings. If I am humanistic in the very fiber of my being, I am by definition someone who strives to undo the racism, sexism, homophobia, and all other biases that make us a society and in many ways a profession that does not value everyone's life, health, and well-being equally. This is a tall order and raises the bar way beyond the caring, compassion, and empathy that we usually talk about. It requires challenging not just ourselves, but the people and systems around us in every decision and every diagnosis we make, every conversation with patients and their families, every phone call to an insurance carrier or pharmacy benefit that's trying to deny our patients the care they deserve. My hope is that you find and that you yourself serve as role models, allies, and mentors who help maintain humanism so that we can hold up the patients and communities who need us most. This is a poem by Dr. Rafael Campo, a Cuban-American physician and poet. The chart. The chart says 54-year-old obese Hispanic female. I wonder if they mean the one with long black braids, Peruvian, who sells tamales at the farmer's market, tells me I'm too thin, I better eat. Or is she the Dominican with too much rouge and almond eyes at the dry cleaners who must have been so beautiful in her youth? Or maybe she's the Cuban lady, drunk on grief, who I've seen half asleep alone as if that bench were only hers, the park her home at last. Or else the Mexican who hoards the littered papers she collects and says they are her documents. If not, could it be the Colombian whose Spanish, even when she's high, is perfect? Or maybe it's the one who never says exactly where she's from, but who reminds me of my grandmother, poor but refined, lace handkerchief balled up in her plump hand, who died too young from a condition that some doctor knows in her chart overlooked. Gold Humanism Honor Society members, thank you for being the doctors who see a grandmother, who notice a person's almond eyes and beautiful braids, who hold your patients close when they are drunk with grief, and who honor the stories and words that your patients carry with them. Thank you for centering the humanity of those you have sworn to care for, and congratulations. Simply put, being humanistic in medicine means seeing my patients as individuals and connecting with them with compassion and empathy always. But for me, the harder question is, how do I maintain my humanism every day? 
These past few years have been challenging for everyone, and I would say particularly for everyone in healthcare. Medicine has always been filled with facts and data and evidence-based decisions, and especially under the pressure of time, pressure of a pandemic, pressure to do something, it's easy to lose sight of the human side of medicine. There will always be times when we lose touch with this side, but the important thing is not that we lost touch, but that we recognize it and try to awaken our humanistic practice. Over time, everyone identifies touchstones that can bring us back. Sometimes this will be a particular patient with whom you connected, maybe after initially having difficulty connecting. Sometimes this will be a role model, someone you seek to emulate. I feel like I have a curated collection in my mind of resources to draw on when I feel disconnected. I lost a close mentor early on in the pandemic and he's become a clear voice in my head, guiding me to connect with my patients, spend time with them, have compassion, and simply be more like him. In this way, I honor him and maintain my own humanism. So curate your own collection as I know you will. Find your own ways to lead with the compassion and empathy and brilliance I see in all of you. The class of 2022's clinical experience has been significantly characterized by a need to modify the way they interact with patients and members of the community at a time when in-person contact has been extremely difficult. For the 2022 GHHS project, students created questions to probe the feelings, experiences, and thoughts of other students, residents, attendings, and staff at Mount Sinai, and focused on patient care and community in a pandemic and post-pandemic time. It is my pleasure to introduce Anna Stacy as she presents this year's student project. In healthcare, communication can be difficult even in the best of times. There's medical jargon, language barriers, cultural differences, professional boundaries, how the patient's feeling, how the provider's feeling, and none of this has been made easier by the pandemic. We now communicate on the phone, over video, through face masks, through face shields, from six feet apart and through gowns and glass walls. I've so loved seeing the creative ways in which people have attempted to bridge this chasm. Transparent face masks so deaf patients can lip read, large badges featuring smiling photos of providers worn on top of PPE so pediatric patients know what their plastic clad doctors and nurses look like. But still, some things remain hard to say. And still, many of us haven't been able to gather together to share and reflect. This year's Mount Sinai Gold Humanism Project aims to shorten the distances made longer by the COVID-19 pandemic. Providers were asked to share something that they wish they could tell a patient, or alternatively, how the pandemic has affected the ways in which they interact with patients and teammates. These responses were then handwritten on postcards, which are on display in the Guggenheim lobby and online, in hopes that we can share with one another. These postcards are tender and personal and at times heartbreaking. They talk of love and courage and compassion and hope. After two trying years, they're a relief to read. It's like medicine. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the faculty and staff who were invited by our inductees to share in this special day. It was of special importance that these students wanted to involve you today and we thank you for making the time to do so. Inductees, please enjoy their personal message to you. Congratulations to the 2022 Inductee Class of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. This is a tribute to your dedication, compassion, and your empathy for taking care of your patients. I would like to thank Lily Tang for inviting me here today. Lily shows a true dedication to practicing humanistic medicine, and I am incredibly happy that she has decided to become a pediatrician. I look forward to working with Lily as a colleague in the future. I wish all of you the best of luck in your future training and hope you continue to bring compassion to taking care of your patients. They will be lucky to have you. Hi there, my name is Dr. Debbie Dorsho. I am a medical oncologist and I had the great pleasure of teaching the future Dr. Anna Stacy in her second year hematology course. I immediately saw that Anna was a humanist, um, a compassionate person, who really wanted to get to know patients on um, a very deep level. Um, as we spoke about patients once she started on the inpatient service, I had the uh, 
be real delight to collaborate with her um, on the care of some of my patients who are admitted to her service. And I really look forward to being able to call her a colleague in the very near future. Congratulations, Anna. Congratulations to all of the inductees of the Gold Humanism Honor Society today. But a very special congratulations to Ariel, JJ, Michelle, and Tyler. As all of you know, you were in my first ASM small group. And I have to think that it must be a record for four people in the same ASM small group to be inducted into Gold Humanism Honor Society. You will always hold a very special place in my heart as such integral members of my first ASM small group. And that's not just because you got my dog, the squeaky toy sitting next to me, which I've selfishly kept in my office for the past three years to be reminded of all of you. I'm not sure that I've ever been in the same room with a group of people who better embody the values of humanism, respect, advocacy, curiosity, and commitment that all of you do and that I aspire to every day. You taught me so much about what it means to truly listen to and advocate for your patients and for one another. You showed me what it means to be fearless in combating injustices, big and small. I have been equally as inspired by your accomplishments as I have by your humility. You are the future leaders of our patients and our profession, and I consider myself incredibly fortunate to have worked with and learned from all of you. Congratulations. From a man who never even won a bronze medal, I am thrilled for all of you that you've won the gold. And more importantly, I'm thrilled that you've become precisely the kinds of compassionate humanistic doctors that I would want to have someday if I ever became ill. And I'm only hoping that when that time comes, you remember me and extend me professional courtesy. Hi, Michelle. It's me, John Ripp, uh, just here to congratulate you with all the others on your being inducted into the gold, the Humanism Honor Society. It's a, it's a real honor for you, but yeah, obviously very well deserved. Uh, no, no surprise to me, given uh, who you are and all the great work that you do and have done for us in the Office of Wellbeing and Resilience. So uh, once again, congratulations. Hi everybody, congratulations on being inducted into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. It could not have happened to a more human and humane group of humans, and it has been my pleasure to work with all of you for the last four or more years. Um, I feel very honored to have been with you on even just this little part of your journey, and I know that you'll continue that journey on after this and, and spread all your amazing gifts to the world. So I am so proud of you. We are so proud of you. Once again, congratulations. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Monica Dweck. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Ophthalmology and Medical Education. I'm also the director of career planning services for Mount Sinai Medical School. I want to congratulate all of you today on being inducted into the Gold Humanism Society, and I am truly very honored to be invited to be a part of this ceremony. Best of luck to all of you. I'm really excited about your future. Take care. Good afternoon, I'm Lauren Pecorello, and I'm a primary care physician here at the Mount Sinai Hospital. I wanted to wish Michelle and Kevin and all of the other Gold Humanism inductees in, of 2022 um, congratulations and best of luck to them on the next steps in their journey. It is now time to present the inductees into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. This year we are asking inductees to introduce one another. The introductions you are going to hear today are peer comments about the inductees that were compiled from a survey taken by students in the inductees class. Classmates agree that Jap Jap Bao, affectionately called JJ, is extremely intelligent and passionately devoted to patient advocacy and care. She is devoted to making the healthcare environment more approachable for patients in underserved communities who do not have equal access to care, which truly motivates her peers. With how her warm and kind energy with patients truly resonates with her peers, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate JJ. Matadi Bella's peers view him as incredibly knowledgeable, kind, compassionate, humble, and dedicated to understanding his patients. To Matadi, no detail, clinical or personal, seemed unimportant to patient care. He learns medicine by asking why and how whenever possible, rather than memorizing a fact. Matadi's constant, genuine curiosity and excitement about medicine is admiring to his classmates, along with his incredible bedside manner that exemplifies how much he cares about patients as people. When his peers think about Matadi, they believe that he is someone who has found his calling in medicine 
and will serve as an incredible asset to whatever field he chooses to specialize. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Matadi. Classmates agree that Biobla Braid's big smile and kind demeanor lights up the room in both clinical and non-clinical space alike. She is compassionate, kind, and an extremely fervent advocate for her patients and peers. Biobla is a huge advocate for mental wellness and teaches her classmates what it means to be kind to themselves. She truly goes the extra mile to raise the people around her to be better people. Biobla's ability to listen and build chemistry with her patients is impeccable. She has a way of making patients feel like they are the only patient that has ever, and will ever, matter with the way that she seems to pause time to hear their story. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Biobla. Classmates of Sandhya Chandrasekharan would say that Sandhya is very intelligent, caring, and has made it a point to prioritize patient care. She dedicates countless hours to her patients in EHOP, assisting them in all matters of care. Sandhya frequently looks beyond the immediate medical needs of patients to better facilitate their comprehensive care. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Sandhya. Peers of Kevin Chung see him as unbelievably kind, gentle, caring, compassionate, non-judgmental, and someone who often puts others' needs before his own. His classmates often find it difficult to know what to do or how they can provide relief for a patient since they are not licensed doctors yet and have a lot of self-doubt. Kevin, however, seems to intuitively know how to do so and is a constant reminder to all who work with him of the power of just listening and being intentional about showing how much you care. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Kevin. A few words that would describe Arielle Coughlin would be admirable, empathetic, compassionate, kind, and considerate. She is known to always speak up for her colleagues and patients and is an amazingly caring patient advocate. She ensures that her patients understand everything that is going on and is always on top of her patients' plans and is aware of their concerns. Her peers truly believe that her presence makes the hospital a better place. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Arielle. Nicholas Dreyer, according to his classmates, inspires everyone around him to be just and caring. He is kind, brilliant, caring, and perhaps more importantly, very relatable. Nick has a natural rapport with his patients and he connects with his patients on a deep level. His commitment to medicine is second to none, and his commitment to EHOP makes it clear that increasing healthcare equity is among his top priorities. Nick works extremely hard to care deeply about each one of his patients, and with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Nick. Classmates describe Axel Epi as an incredibly compassionate, but also an incredibly knowledgeable human. They all agree that very few people in the class seem to combine Axel's clinical acumen, broad knowledge base, and professionalism with immense compassion and treating everyone around him with kindness. He has a huge heart and cares for people in his class deeply. Axel is incredibly dedicated to learning the science of medicine, and he's tremendously curious. He has taught some of his classmates to not just learn for the sake of learning or to only learn for the sake of a specialty, but rather to have the broad width of knowledge as a means to have a more comprehensive and holistic approach to medicine and patient care. This is clear to many who know how much Axel is invested in patients' well-being. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Axel. Gabriella Frigg is seen by her classmates as someone who dedicates immense time into serving her community in a myriad of ways. Gabby recognizes that caring for patients goes beyond just prescribing medicines or treatments. Many have seen firsthand her wholehearted commitment to the health and wellness of her patients and the thoughtful care she provides to each one. Gabby truly goes above and beyond to show kindness and empathy and worth to everyone. She works extremely hard and does not lose sight of the importance of treating people with respect and compassion while still working diligently and dedicatedly. Watching Gabby work for her patients motivates her peers continuously to strive to provide an equitable and approachable environment for their patients. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Gabby. 
If Daniel Hennig's classmates were to describe him, they would say he is the hardest studying, working, and most diligent individual in the class. He is truly outstanding and intelligent. Dan's kindness, devotion, and advocacy for patients is incredible. He can easily, easily relate to anyone and make them feel seen, heard, and cared for. Dan is extraordinarily present in his interactions with patients and seeks out answers about their everyday life, desiring to understand them on a personal level outside the scope of their condition. His attention to detail and his commitment to being a knowledgeable and empathetic provider is commendable. What is truly special about Dan is that when he commits to something, he does it with all of his heart. Dan possesses a genuine desire to put his heart and soul into his work to the best he can when he sets his mind on something. Very few people could come close to his level of commitment. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Dan. Classmates of Chioma Uwewumo describe her as a beacon of hope, a person who embodies integrity, excellence, altruism, respect, empathy, and service to society. Her peers feel she will lead the next generation of medical providers in ensuring there will be racial and ethnic equity in medical education, practice, and research. Chioma exemplifies the humanistic approach of seeing the patient as a complex individual by always prioritizing the patient's needs by centering their lived experience. With patients she works with, Chioma immediately takes personal responsibility for them and cares for them. She is a person of deep values of equity and respect. Her peers agree that Chioma shows up for herself, her colleagues, and her patients. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Chioma. When asked about Akio Kazado, his classmates say he is warm, intelligent, has a remarkably friendly personality, patient, and has a strong work ethic. He fosters relationships with patients and other caregivers that are compassionate and empathic while being sensitive to the values, autonomy, cultural, and ethnic backgrounds of others. Akio consistently motivates others to want to improve the healthcare environment, especially for the LGBTQ community. Many feel Akio will lead the next generation of medical providers in ensuring sexual and gender equity in medical education, practice, and research representing LGBTQIA plus individuals, particularly transgender and gender non-binary individuals. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Akio. Tyler Martinson is the kind of person who always treats the people around him with respect and shows deep empathy for patients and the variety of life circumstances that they bring to care. He understands the value of listening attentively and treating everyone with kindness. His peers agree that to a stranger, Tyler and a patient may seem more like previous old friends because that is the culture of ease that he creates with all of his patients. It is with this culture Tyler is able to facilitate patient knowledge building, trust, and effectual care. Tyler is humble, caring, charismatic, smart, and an inspiration to his peers on taking the time to gain knowledge, not only on acutely what is going on with his patients, but also the systemic factors that are impeding their care. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Tyler. Classmates agree that Devika Nadkarni has a kind, warm, welcoming heart that will make her stand out to patients as someone they can always trust. She's not only intelligent, but is also extremely thorough, thoughtful, and humble and someone that takes great care of others. Tremendously conscientious and diligent in her clinical knowledge, she ensures thoughtful and comprehensive care to her patients. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Devika. Peers of Agachuku Anu, better known as Aga, believe that she shows exemplary commitment and devotion to her patients. Aga truly embodies the meaning of taking care of a patient as she understands that medical treatment is multifaceted, requires more than just medicine to treat a patient longitudinally, and makes the most effective plan accordingly. Her people skills and emotional intelligence are simply unmatched. Aga takes the time, cares about providing excellent patient care, and is willing to take the extra time to understand her patient's rationale and priorities in making their medical decisions. She brings joy, humor, realism, and perseverance to patient care. It is known that Aga will work harder than anyone else will. She's one of the few people who knows her limits, but rather than let them define her, she will work to surpass them to fight for her patients and do whatever it takes to get the job done. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Aga. Andrew Pastor is deeply insightful and kind. His peers view him as a wonderful human being who they know will take care of other human beings with kindness, care, and respect. 
He brings a smile to everyone he interacts with. Andrew has strong values and furthermore, dedicates immense time to advancing those values. He advocates for his patients against the odds and many challenging circumstances. He put the interests of his patients first, especially when it comes to translating for Spanish-speaking patients. Andrew cares deeply about treating all patients with respect and dignity and works diligently to understand and enact meaningful change in the spaces that he occupies. Social justice is a passion of Andrew, so much so his classmates dub him an MVP for equity because of all the hard work he has put into making our healthcare system better. A true crusader for equitable care and anti-racism, his peers are awe inspired by his unwavering commitment. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Andrew. Alexandra Sali is described by her peers as a force of nature. Alex is a passionate advocate for the fair and empathetic treatment of patients with psychiatric disorders. This passion is not only reflected on the wards, but in fighting for those patients through research and advocacy work. Alex always goes above and beyond for her patients, not only by caring for their physical health, but also by caring for their mental health. She is compassionate to the extreme, and it is clear to everyone who works with Alex that she primarily listens to her patients. She listens to them, hears them, and speaks to them with kindness and unparalleled patience. As much as she is an eager listener, she is a fearless fighter for her patients' rights. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Alex. Cleo Sedaris is truly the embodiment of selflessness. Her classmates feel that she has an unwavering passion to help those who are unable to receive the care they deserve. And this is present in her work ethic, her desire to work at institutions that cater to the principle that all patients deserve healthcare regardless of their socioeconomic status. Cleo is incredibly brilliant, yet remains one of the most humble people her peers have ever encountered. It was clear for many of her peers that she is always patient-oriented and patient-focused and will be a great physician for her patients. Her classmates make note of how patients always left encounters with Cleo, feeling that she truly cared about their overall well-being and their health. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Cleo. Classmates all agree that Anna Stacy's enthusiasm, vivacious personality, and passion for medicine is complemented by her nurturing and caring attitude towards patients. She is kind, approachable, and warm. Anna acutely understands what it means to be a human and what it means to be a human who is vulnerable or struggling. Peers are always so impressed by how well she navigates uncomfortable or stressful situations. Every encounter with her, you are always left with a sense of hopefulness and optimism. Anna combines a high degree of clinical competence and excellent medical knowledge with a calm, confident, warm, humorous, and open bedside manner that immediately puts patients at ease and makes her a pleasure to work with as a peer and colleague. Her ability to quickly and seemingly effortlessly connect with patients and colleagues on a deep level is truly inspiring to her classmates. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Anna. Lily Tang always has the patient's interest in mind, always thinking about the patient's needs and the needs of the family, which is especially important in pediatrics. Her classmates feel she is always caring about the patient in a way that extends beyond traditional clinic settings, but also by providing preventative health, anticipatory guidance, and education. They have confidence in Lily becoming an incredible and deeply empathic pediatrician because she brings the power of her own life experience and that of her families into the clinical space. By being so authentically herself and willing to speak up on behalf of less visible groups, such as those with disabilities, Lily is extremely impactful in her advocacy work. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Lily. Michelle Tong always shows great respect and understanding to the people around her. She is a sensitive, compassionate, and caring human. Her classmates are always impressed by the maturity, empathy, and grace that Michelle demonstrates in her interactions and the understanding she demonstrates towards her patients and colleagues. She is able to connect with all her patients, even some of whom one would consider challenging. Her kind demeanor dissolves whatever barriers some patients initially have. At the core of Michelle's spirit is a desire to connect with people as they are, through their words, interests, dreams, and challenges. Michelle is the epitome of who her classmates consider selfless and a champion of, for equitable care for both patients and healthcare providers. In addition, her activism on behalf of marginalized populations, 
including her work on segregated care at Mount Sinai and her dedication to the humanities and medicine, benefits not only her patients, but also her peers. With that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Michelle. Peers of Uwana Basi feel Uwana combines her faith and her clinical skills in a way that would make any patient believe anything is possible. Uwana is remarkably caring, kind, and extremely knowledgeable. She fosters relationships with patients and other caregivers that are compassionate and empathic. She takes care of being sensitive to values, autonomy, cultural and ethnic backgrounds of others. With her ability to articulate injustice, her confidence to speak up in large group settings, and her poise when doing so, Umana is a natural leader. Umana's targeted calling on her peers to do anti-racist work in a way that is intentional, direct, and collaborative made her peers feel more comfortable doing so. Her classmates are always in awe of Uwana's commitment and passion for equity and her eloquence in advocating for it. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Unwana. The Leonard Dow Humanism and Medicine Award presented by the Arnold B. Gold Foundation recognizes faculty members who are exemplars of humanism in the delivery of care to patients. It is my honor to present the recipient of the 2022 Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award to Dr. Victor Santa Ana. Victor Santa Ana has demonstrated a deep care and compassion for both patient care and medical education. He has instilled in students the importance of caring for the whole patient, and often that goes beyond what a treatment or procedure can do. His students express that Dr. Santa Ana is an exceptional primary care physician, not only in terms of clinical acumen and efficiency, but also in the way that he makes patients feel special and heard. He emits kindness and warmth in all patient interactions, just in the way he talks and addresses patients. His students have lost count of the number of patients who have told them there truly is no one else like Dr. Santa Ana. He earnestly cares and advocates tirelessly for patients and has the amazing capacity to make each patient feel that they are in good hands at every stage of their healthcare experience. And with that, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate Dr. Victor Santa Ana. We now ask the 2022 Gold Humanism Honor Society inductees to join us as we recite the Gold Humanism Honor Society Oath. I pledge by all that I hold dear. Here as a physician, I will care for my patients with compassion, respect, empathy, integrity, and clinical excellence. I will listen to my patients with my whole being. I'll advocate for each patient as a unique individual. I will serve as a role model and mentor to promote humanism in healthcare. I will remember always the healing power of acts of caring. I will dedicate myself to joining with others to make healthcare care optimal for all. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, my name is Tara Cunningham and I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Student Affairs at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I have the pleasure of closing today's ceremony with another note of congratulations to you, our newest inductees into the coveted Gold Humanism Honor Society. You make us so very proud, and you are admired by your friends, family, mentors, and peers. But the most important person in today's ceremony is absent, and that's your patient. The patient that remembers the time they met you, when you eased their fears, answered questions, and took time to be present when present. It is this experience that earned you a place in a society that honors humanism over academics, and where a gentle touch is more important than the white coat you wear. May you remember this moment and continue to lead and care with compassion, understanding, empathy for your patients, colleagues, friends, family, and yourself. Again, my sincerest congratulations to you.